What do you say, everybody? Paul from Cleveland. I'm out in the garage again. Quick uh, project I'm working on. I thought, why not uh, fire up the camera, uh, get this on video. I'm going to do a differential rebuild on my Suburban. And I thought, why not do a video on this? If I crash and burn, I crash and burn. So get the uh, camera turned around and show you where I'm at. All right, guys, let me show you. So far, what I've done is I've got the vehicle up on some jack stands. The jack stands are on the frame. And then for additional safety, because I just do not like crawling around under vehicles, I've got two three-ton floor jacks, um, one on each side under the front wishbone, just in case, you know, if a jack stand slips, I've got some additional support there from the, uh, from the floor jack. So double up on the safety and now let's get down underneath this thing and take a look all right guys um as you can see it's uh i got just enough clearance to slide under the uh, front suspension here i don't really need this vehicle up any higher than this but this uh this device right here the front differential that's what i'm looking at and at least from an ease of access standpoint it's an easy thing to get to um you know, just get the uh, get the vehicle off the ground, get under it, and it's literally right there. Now, one of the things I'll show you, let's see, I'm I'm going at the front of my phone here, so everything is reversed, and so I'm going to have to take a few seconds here to get myself oriented. Um, drive shaft. Let's see if I can get oh, see if I can get back far enough here. The drive shaft goes in back there, so. Uh, again, there's the drive shaft. Um, I have to disconnect the drive shaft and re you know remove it from the yoke. Please excuse the man up the uh, street there remodeling a house. Now here's something. All right, let me see if I can get this and show you. There's been a lot of fluid that's been thrown out of this thing. And I'm hoping that it's coming, showing on camera. Um, so I think the seal has, uh, this seal on the driver's side has let go. And that's where all of this sprayed fluid is coming from. Um, I'm hoping that's showing up on camera. Uh, so yeah, definitely there has been, definitely been a seal failure. And also when you drive this thing, you get a very distinct uh, bearing whining sound, like one of the bearings has gone bad. So, But otherwise, I don't think this is going to be that difficult to do. Um, disconnection point there, then over here there's two, there's two nuts here, and then there's a, another connection point up front that I've got to get to. So, you know... This isn't going to be that bad. Now, I say that now, but I don't think it's going to be too terrible. I've, I've done worse, believe me. I've, I've done much more difficult uh, projects. Okay, guys, let me give you an update on where we are. I got the drive shaft disconnected. It's there. I've got the driver's side axle disconnected. You can see it over there. I've got the bolts out on the passenger side axle. I'll take it loose. I'm going to have to take the uh, tie rod loose. It's uh, it's going to have to be disconnected and taken out of the way. I thought maybe I could get away with not doing that. Yeah, no, it's not going to work. It's going to have to come come out. You can see I got the nut off there and the other nut off on the other side. I just went over to Harbor Freight and got a uh, tie rod uh, disconnector, tie rod splitter. And I'm going to try and put that on and uh, see what I can do with this. So, if I once I get the tie rod out of the way, um, I should be ready to actually start taking this thing down. <clears throat> well, guys, I'm going to finish my cup of coffee here and get back on this project. Um, I'm uh, removing and rebuilding a GM 8.25 front differential. I've got it turned um, long way so that everything's draining down against the uh, driver's side axle and then I'm going to disassemble it basically top down 
water and let all the fluid settle down in the bottom. It, I did drain it, um, but you know, there's always going to be residual fluid left in it. Probably the hardest thing I had to do um, on this job so far was removing the tie rod. And that just, that's just because the uh, pitman arm and the idler arm were so rusted in place, I had to, you know, do a considerable amount of beating and banging to get it to break free. I bought one of the uh, Harbor Freight tie rod in separators or tie rod separators, which was, you know, an invaluable $15 purchase. But there is something I want to show you uh, about that, just a little quick tip if any of you have to do this kind of work in the future. Um, you have to do some, uh, <coughs> excuse me, you have to do some uh, tinkering with that uh, tie rod tool to get it to work right. So and I'll show you what I did. But again, I'm going to finish my coffee and uh, we'll get back on this project. All right. This is that uh, Harbor Freight tie rod separator. And what you'll see is you can see how I ground it down to this, there you get a good, that arced shape. And then I also rounded the corners as well. When you buy this thing, it's basically just a, you know, a square blunt edge, very sharp, very thick. You cannot get it on the uh, tie rod joint. The, the rubber boot is in the way and it's just, it's just too much material to try to push out of the way. However, if you do this little rounding of your uh, tie rod separator, it will, you know, slip past the boot and shove the boot out of the way. And if, there's still enough material there to give you enough tension to uh, break that tie rod joint loose. So, yeah, I definitely recommend if you're going to buy one of these Harbor Freight tie rod separators, great tool. It was like 15 bucks, but you've definitely got to ground the ends to get it to work properly. So, anyway, a little tech tip out of this, uh, something I figured out that made that job a whole lot easier last night. All right, let's get going on this thing. Got me an old medical specimens cooler here for my 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 little work area over here. So okay, well that's interesting. Supposedly. You're supposed to be able to just knock those things out. Oh yeah, this is gonna be fun. Getting my poor old hammer to pieces here. And I believe there's a clip that goes in that groove right there, and I think that clip is down inside the spider gear or something. I'll have to see. Anyway, we've got it out. And I think that thing might be uh, stuck in that. Uh, Shaft might be stuck, seized up in there. From everything that I have seen, these cases are notoriously hard to get apart because there's a dowel either on this end or on this end. I can't remember, but there's a dowel that is notoriously difficult to get loose. And as old as this thing is, you know it's going to be a bear. So. <clears throat>
couple of uh, to, under any circumstances, stick this pry bar in between those two pieces because all I'll do is wreck it, which is why I'm leaving it here on the outside and just doing a quick jerk and it is coming apart because as soon as I jab something in there, I'll score the finish and ruin it. So, just, there it is. that piece. So now what I'm going to do is I've got this uh, Sterilite Tupperware container lid over here. I'm just going to kind of triage things over there that way if they drain more they can do so and then I can just clean that lid out. Those bearings don't feel all that to lift out, but I bet it's not lifting out because that other axle is still in place. So, I'm going to pause, have another little sip of coffee. I'm going to get my uh, drain pan that's over here behind me, and I'm going <clears> to <throat> drain whatever's left of the uh, fluid, and then I'm going to have to see if I can get that, uh, that other axle out. with the clips still inside too. I'm hoping I can just leave those clips in there and reinsert these axles and they'll be fine. That's what I'm hoping. So now, that assembly should come out. Leaving me a uh, empty, relatively empty case with just the... Uh, now, Initial inspection of the, uh, I don't even know what this is called, but this, this uh, spiral drive gear. Uh, I don't see any damage of any kind. I don't see any pitting, gouges, or anything. That's good. That means that I don't have anything wrong with this. Now, I'll flip that uh, spider gear over and I'll take a look at it. But if I have no damage here, I have no reason to believe that there'll be damage there. That's good. That means that all I really have with this case is just routine wear and tear. Uh, seals, bearings, and that's it, seals and bearings. So this is good. I'm, I'm, I'm very, very pleased. All right, guys, it is executive decision time. And the executive decision is that I am not removing this assembly. Um, if you can probably see there, the condition of that gear, oops, got a little uh, paper towel on it. The condition of this gear is very good. I mean, that gear looks like the day it left the factory. This whole assembly is very tight. It's very, very smooth. So I'm not, I'm not gonna bother with it. Uh, I'm gonna remove the yoke and put a new seal on, but I would probably do far more damage to this whole assembly and this whole package trying to disassemble it than I would any potential wear that it's got, you know, from, you know, the quarter million miles of use that it's got. So I'm leaving it alone, and I think that's ultimately going to make this rebuild much, much simpler.
Well, that didn't go well. Let's try that again. I gotta tighten her down. Tighten down a little tighter this time. It's moving very slowly, but it is moving. Please tell me this is on. Yes. All right, there we go. Oh, there's the yoke. Yoke looks good. That's not, again, it's not terrible. For the amount of, uh, the amount of miles, Nothing's really looking terrible. Okay. Now I need to get that seal out of there. You know what, before I get too aggressive on this, I gotta make sure that I know what the new seal looks like. I'm assuming that this is all part of the seal. But before I go assuming, let me go get the new set and uh, take a look at it and make sure that it is the same. Sure, you guys, something else. Um, here's that race, and as far as this race goes, that right there is the worst spot, which that's bad enough. But again, for 260,000 miles, that's pretty clean, except for you know that right there. So, yeah, I felt originally when I, you know, I felt all oh, the things really chowdered up, yeah, yeah just that. So, yeah, not, not, I'm not finding anything really, really terrible with this. 